live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. Hi, Jenny. Oh, you got a three-piece all today, huh? Yeah. You know what? Getting sick and tired of this. What you get sick and tired of? Do, do you realize what's happening to me? What's We've happening? had we're going to have four shows before game one of the finals, yeah. which means four times I have to talk about that guy again and again and again and again. What guy? So why don't we just call off the finals? Let's award Toronto the trophy and him the MVP Ooh. and just be done with no. it because I'm tired of it. This is my worst nightmare. If, no if, kidding. First of all, you know if that were to happen, that's gonna be your worst nightmare because you realize. He could have been the MVP for your Spurs, and they would have had the trophy. Okay, well, let's just get it over with. Yeah. It, 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 it feels meant to be. It like is meant happening. to be. Mm -hmm. But now I have to talk about it for four days before it even starts. Yeah. Right? This has been interesting. I like the look by so, the gym. Thank let's, you. Let's talk about the Cowboys first. Uh, no, no we're not going to no. go there. We've we got a lot to get to on today's show. I don't think the Cowboys are in the mix. <laughs> what does Batman have to do with the Lakers' oh, dysfunction? Good question. We'll go there. And Kevin Durant is traveling to Toronto. What does that mean? But we are going to start with... With, well, Skip's worst nightmare. Ooh. The Raptors are in their first NBA Finals in franchise history, and a huge reason why is Kawhi Leonard. He's been awesome in the playoffs, averaging about 31 points and nine rebounds a game. Doc Rivers even gave him the ultimate compliment yesterday, saying, quote, he is the most like Jordan that we've seen. Doc talks about Kawhi's defense, his post-game moves, and his leaping ability as similar to MJ. Uh, Shannon, do you agree? Skip. No. Heck no. Heck no? Crooked L no. Really? Skip, this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous? First of all, Vegas has the odds now as the Clippers are the overwhelming favorite to land Kawhi's services in mm -hmm. free agency. Doc Rivers is the head right, coach right. of the Clippers. And I get it, Skip, but the hyperbole has got to stop. Mm. The closest thing that we've ever seen to Michael Jordan played for the Lakers. He wore eight for half his career. He, he wore 24 for the last half he of his did. career. Yeah. That is the closest thing. Kobe Bryant was Michael Jordan with hair. People forget just how good Kobe was on the defensive end. Do you know that Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan both made nine, team, nine first team all defensive? You look at Kobe and what he was able to do. Kobe Bryant once averaged 43 points mm. for an entire month. Mm -hmm. He had five straight games of at least 40 points. And you know he threw that 81 points and once had 62 points in mm -hmm. three quarters. Yep. Skip, I get it. You know, Kawhi has the big hands, mm -hmm. but he's not the closest thing we've seen to Mike. Mm. Kobe is. Mm. Kobe and Mike, for the better part of their career, Skip, were above the rim players. You look at, if you were to just close, if there was no Mike, Kobe would have been Mike. Mm. The way he put the uh, uh, the wristband on his elbow, Skip, the way he put the knee sleeve, the way he walked, the way when he celebrated the game, with, what did he do? The same thing George did. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. And you, the tongue? Yes! Every, no. happens. He's a carbon copy mm -hmm. of Michael Jordan, not Kawhi. Kawhi does, is not above the rim player. Yeah, he has a nice fadeaway, mm. but it ain't Michael Kobe. Mm. You look at Kobe's footwork, look at Mike's footwork. You look at everything they did, everything that Mike did. If you were to take an hour and says, "Okay, I want an hour worth of footage of Mike," mm -hmm. and he says, "Okay, I want an hour worth of footage of Kobe." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, come on, man, for real, Kobe, mm -hmm. you gonna steal every move this man made? Mm -hmm. You gonna do everything like this man did? Mm -hmm. Skip, I get it, I get it, Doc. You want to? Oh, Ka Kawhi, just want you to know in this organization, you're first and foremost. Mm -hmm. We're gonna back our players, but come on. Mm. Nobody believes that Kawhi Leonard is the closest thing to Jordan. Mm. No, that's Kobe. Kawhi is an unbelievable player, a great two-way player, three-time first-team all-defensive, two-time defensive player of the year, having a great playoff run. Mm. But I'm sorry, Doc, I'm going to have to disagree with you mm. on this one. Mm. Kobe Bryant is the closest thing to Michael Jordan that we've ever seen mm. and probably will be the closest mm. that we ever see. So I must admit I am shocked by your response to this. Uh. And... I'm starting to read into your bitterness over there that you sound like a jilted LeBron fan oh my who has finally given up on landing number two on one side of the tracks, like on the Lakers side of Staples as opposed to the Clippers side. No, All right? no, 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 no. Sounds no. like you're just giving up on that. No, I'm not giving up, yeah. but I'm just not going to let Doc Rivers uh, 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 commit blasphemy huh. on Mike and Kobe. 
I will agree, uh, agree it was blasphemy. And <laughs> I'm, I'm actually shocked that Doc, even though he has a hidden agenda or not yeah, so hidden, yeah, exactly, right? it's, thank it's you. an upfront agenda. So in other but, words, but, he's tampering without tampering, huh? Okay, you could argue that. But I would think that Doc, because I have so much respect for him, would at least pay some of that respect to, to the Lakers legend of legends, Kobe Bryant. Yes. I would think he would just defer to that. And he would immediately say, look, Kobe was the closest, but this guy, blah, blah, blah. Thank he could you. go there, but he didn't go there. He didn't bring up Kobe at all. But the other reason I am so shocked is I have had to sit over here day after morning after day after morning hearing you gush about number two. I guess just to rub it in on me, but it's you, you're the ultimate bandwagon jumper. You jump on, you jump off. No. And you have been driving number two's yeah. bandwagon right over the top of me yes. morning after morning. Skip, just because I don't believe okay. he's Jordan doesn't mean he's okay, not great. But, but you have called him the, the best two-way player in basketball. Hands down. The MVP of Hands the playoffs. Down. Hands down. The claw, yeah, shown up, yeah, and I think it was shown up was all for show <laughs> no. enough, right? Oh, no. I think it was oh, all no. for show because I think you're now showing your true colors, and they are not Toronto's black, red, and silver. That's a weird color combination, yes. but that's what they are. They're but black, rapid, red, and on. silver. You are not really those colors. Yeah, no, I'm skip, right? See you. What you? I see what you're trying to do. No, I'm seeing what you're trying to do. Skip. All I'm saying is that Doc, I believe, was in hy using hyperbole. Okay. I do not believe Kawhi is the closest thing to Jordan. Do I believe he's the best player in the playoffs right now? Absolutely. Mm. Is he the best two-way player in basketball? Yes, absolutely. Mm. Mm. But two things, remember, two things can be true. Oh, okay. He cannot be the closest thing to Michael Jordan while still being the best two-way player in the mm. game and the best player currently playing. Mm. And you upset. I, I'm upset because the guy who hit the luckiest shot in the history of the playoffs is also the luckiest player in the history How's of the playoffs. How's he lucky? Because he fell into this vacuum where he's the new it player because there's no LeBron, he's on his couch, and he's obviously no longer in the East, and then there was no really Embiid, and then Giannis failed all of us because he became an exposed disappointment, and all of a sudden this guy fell why right you, into the magic moment. Why do you keep his saying time. Giannis was exposed? Yo, it, he, you don't think he was? I mean, it Kawhi, was awful. Well, Jen, if he was exposed, who pulled his clothes off? Well, I don't know. Mm. Claw! I, I think the whole Toronto. No, 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 stop did. doing this. See, well, there you go trying to minimize no, him I'm again. Not. I'm not. Okay, so back to Doc's premise here. Okay. J just remember that this is amusing to me because <laughs> I actually covered Michael Jordan in Chicago and got to know him in his last run with the Bulls. And I'm pretty sure that very few people on the planet, except people who work for the Spurs, watched more of number two when he was a Spur than I did, because right. I watched just about every game he played for seven years with the Spurs, except the last year I couldn't watch him a lot because he only played nine he games. He was injured. I don't know. He, he was, was injured. Whatever he was, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> so I would say I'm actually pretty qualified to, to gauge Jordan versus number two. Okay. okay. And remember, our man Kendrick Perkins was the first to raise this comparison. Right. And I told you, and I think I told Kendrick, I'm going to go this far, that just in movement, he does remind me of Mike. I'm going to give right. you just the movement. I, I'm talking about that, that kind of Jordan-esque, raw athletic power movement. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's close to what Jordan did. The ability to power bounce a defender off you, especially from about 15 feet, mm -hmm. to create space with your, your athletic power, then to rise and hang, because he can leap, right. hang, and shoot two-point jumpers with big hands, right. sometimes just a one-handed jumper, right. that is Jordan-esque. I'm going to give you that much. Right. The defense is Jordan-esque yes. because we're talking about huge hands, long raw, powerful, athletic yeah. ability that can overwhelm the, the guy in front of you with the ball. Mm -hmm. you, you can just suffocate him because mm -hmm. you're so long and strong, yes. okay? I'm gonna give you, that is Jordan-esque, but the comparisons end there, period, end of story. And obviously, K Kobe is the closest. <laughs> Kobe was not Michael Jordan, but, yeah. but he was the closest. He was the closest. And it, to your point, he tried to become Michael. <laughs> this guy's not trying to become, he's just trying to become the best number two that he can be, and this right. is all new to him. Right. He is a late bloomer. Mm. I'm gonna remind everybody, 
He was the 15th overall pick, was number two. Mm -hmm. Originally, it was a trade, obviously, with Larry Bird in Indiana. Mm -hmm. And it was shocking that R.C. Buford wanted him that high because, right. remember, he'd stayed for two years at San Diego State. Right. You know, that's usually the telltale. Well, right. he's not that great if he doesn't come out after the first year, right? Correct. Okay. And he had averaged 12 and 15 points at San Diego State. And offense was second thought for him because he was all defense. Right. And, and everybody knew he could defend, but nobody thought he was the 15th pick in the draft. Right. So it took the shot doctor guru of the, I told you this the other day, of the Spurs, Chip sure. England, to, tr to teach him a shot that he did not have. And it took Greg Popovich to pull him out of his shell and to try to get him to open up and have enough faith in himself to actually go ahead and shoot that shot. Right. Shoot the shot. Right. They just, for the first two years, it's, just shoot it. You're right. okay, go ahead, right. it's okay. Shoot it. Mm -hmm. Duncan, Ginobili Park. You're, you're good, kid. Just shoot. We're okay with you. If you have the shot, take the shot. Okay, this is the opposite of what, what we saw from Michael Jordan from the start, right? Yeah. It's a laughable comparison because he's just now coming out of his shell this first year in Toronto, And I right? think Mike led the league in scoring his rookie year. Okay, and Michael Jordan won 10 <laughs> scoring titles. Yeah. Kobe won two, but, but Kobe had 26 games post and regular season yeah. both of 50 plus, 26 times he went 50 plus. Right. And, and as you point out, he did have an 81 on there, right? <laughs> and Michael had 39 games of 50 plus. This guy, number two, had his career high this year for Toronto of 45, that's one time. And only twice has he gone over 40. Right. The other one was a 41 he had against LeBron's Cavaliers on a game. Stars leave. There's a